The report that CEOs of some top Malaysian banks, including those held by GLICs, earned hefty raises and bonuses in 2020 is distressing. Last year, when we called for an extension of the loan moratorium to assist families and business still affected by COVID 19 lockdowns, we were told by bankers that doing so may disrupt the banking sector and potentially upend the entire financial system. Siding with the banks, the PN government and its banker finance minister, who earned ERM 8.53 million in 2019, opted to support a targeted approach which would inevitably disadvantage families and businesses lacking the wherewithal and capacity to satisfy complex bank procedures on short notice. We still do not know the negative impact of this targeted approach on the economy, jobs, and the livelihood of struggling families. Now we are told that the banking sector is gearing for renewed profitability in 2021 and has given pay raises to senior executives as high as 58%. The CEO of at least one GLC bank has earned 10% boost in salary. Business is booming for some while much of the country continues to cope with the ongoing impact of the movement control order. We do not condemn profit making. We are suspicious, however, of profiteering at the top at the expense of the weak and vulnerable. I raise the following questions to banking regulators. If 2020 bank profits can support a 10% salary boost for top executives, were rank and file employees of the bank also awarded with commensurate salary increases? At what point in 2020 were banks' profits deemed adequate to support large increases in salaries, bonuses, and shareholder dividends? But not large enough to support sustained loan moratoriums for struggling families? What is most distressing is that the PN government called for an all of society mobilization to cushion the impact of the pandemic, which should include corporate and GLC executives sharing in the pain of their employees and customers. In reality, the PN government appears content knowing that some Malaysians, particularly the most vulnerable, are forced to bear a greater share of the burden, while others who are more privileged appear to be back to business as usual.